Well, there's an investigation underway right now at one of the nation's best known colleges after a month long series of reports about alleged hate speech, racism and vandalism on the campus. The story is capturing the attention of some celebrity alums, including the well-known Lena Dunham. It's happening at Oberlin College in Ohio. One instance allegedly included a student apparently seeing a person dressed, or so they claimed, in a Ku Klux Klan-like white robe walking near the college's African Heritage House. As I was in the car, I saw um, someone in what seemed to be KKK paraphernalia walking on a pathway that's like a pathway that leads to South Campus and just like seeing that and having it sink in like this is something that's real that actually happens. These events have been going on for about a month so it started with some graffiti, it started with uh, swastikas being drawn on buildings, posters being defaced so people are getting very upset. And there is some evidence of that. These are some of the signs that have been posted on campus in recent days. You can see it's no n-words. We've blacked out the offensive word. On the right you can see whites only and there are some other examples uh, that we'll show you. Police say they don't know whether these incidents are meant as pranks or are driven by bigotry. Our next guest is an Oberlin alum who has a different take on what is happening here. Michelle Malkin is a columnist and a Fox News contributor. And a lot of well-known people actually went to Oberlin. I mentioned Lena Dunham. She's the creator and star of the HBO hit Girls. And she's also a big Barack Obama uh, endorser. She was the one who came out and said you should vote for him because... When it's your first time, you want to you want to lose it yeah. to some. I don't know how she put it, but in any event, she's she's concerned about what's happening on the campus. You are an alumna, and you see this very differently. Michelle, tell us. I certainly do. I think that this is the perfect storm of le left wing pathologies. And while much of the international media jumped to the same knee jerk conclusion that the administration did, that somehow these hate crimes were perpetrated by uh, people who uh, had some animus against minorities or gay people, my experience is much different. And in fact, um, when I was at Oberlin in the late 1980s and early 1990s, there were many of these same types of incidents that happened that turned out to be hate crimes hoaxes. And um, in one instance, uh, there was anti-Asian graffiti that was sprayed all across a, a memorial on campus, and it turned out that it was an Asian American student had, who had perpetrated this bias crime in a warped attempt to raise awareness of racism that didn't exist and had to be fabricated. Um, and so in this case, what you had was over the past week, um, everyone from papers in, in the UK to black entertain, entertain, entertainment television to the New York Times all piling on after the administration, the faculty, the president uh, published this ostentatious open letter that they were actually canceling classes despite not having any evidence that this was what they claim it was, a hate crime motivated by anti-minority uh, sentiment on campus. And, and, and now you've got the, the police. Well, yeah, I want to get to that because so now, I mean, we mm -hmm. showed some of the signs and she mentions anti-gay bias as well because some of the signs read no and then it says F word, which is a derogatory right. word for, for gay people. In any event, there is evidence of this animus on the campus, but the point you're raising is, but who's behind it and what's the purpose? And, and let's just start with, with, the, with the KKK robe that was spotted. You mm -hmm. heard the soundbite from the woman saying, you know, this is what I saw. But now the yeah. police are raising questions about that, Michelle. That's right. Now, when you've got people actually on the ground asking questions uh, from eyewitnesses, it turns out that according to one local report, that the police are saying that the only person that was spotted with anything remotely looking like a KKK hood was a woman who was walking around wrapped in a blanket. So it's the assault blanket of phantom racism and bias that, that was possibly a mistaken identity here. Um, it's too good to be true or too bad to be true, I think. And um, the fact that you've got law enforcement saying that they cannot verify this uh, points to, to me, um, to the many examples, not just at Oberlin. I don't want to single out my alma mater, but this has happened many, many times over the last couple of decades where these things are hatched by progressives who are trying to prove that institutional racism exists in their lives when... <laughs> Really, the racism comes from these leftists who are segregating these kids and raising their race consciousness in a very poisonous way. The, I just want to tell the viewers, uh, according to The Guardian, 
Lieutenant Mike McCloskey of Oberlin Police suggested that the only witness to that alleged KKK sighting may have been mistaken. Uh, they could not verify the claims. And then they arrested two students, but the police say it's unclear if it was motivated by racial hatred or if they just wanted a, a, to make a commentary on free speech. I mean, there, there is, a, there is a, a bit of a leaping to conclusions. I mean, people get, you know, it, it evokes a visceral reaction when you see the N-word and you see the F-word and uh, you hear about somebody wearing a KKK robe walking by the African Center and, and people jump to these conclusions. But we have to be careful that, I mean, you, you, the way you posit in your piece is that identity politics on, at these campuses uh, may lead you to leap to the wrong conclusion and make a bigger deal out of something that may be not what you're thinking. That's right. Segregated dorms, segregated ac ad academic departments, segregated graduations. And I think most irresponsibly, faculty and, ad and, and administrators who foster these kind of grievance politics on campus and then leap to their own conclusions. I think this administration needs to be held accountable for going out, patting itself on the back in the sanctimonious way about the community coming together against the forces of racism when they will now clam up about the true motivations of these so-called perpetrators. Because in one case, uh, in a couple of cases, there are two students who are apparently arrested, but they will not now say anything publicly about what they were doing, what their intentions were, and I think is key, what the race um, and identity politics of these own students were who were responsible for that. Well, Michelle, I believe this will conclude the list of things that you have in common with Lena Dunham. Uh, where you went to college. <laughs> I think I'm safe That's in saying that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks for coming on with your perspective.